Hello, and welcome to Multi-Level Mondays, a weekly series all about pyramid schemes, Ponzi schemes, multi-level marketing, and other forms of business fraud. I'm the Illuminati, and today we're going to be talking about Senegents. Now, this makeup MLM is mostly known for their Lip Sense product line, of course, but as is the case with every single MLM we've discussed before, there's far more to the company than just questionable products. So without any further ado, let's get right into how Senegents was founded, any controversies they've been involved with, and of course, those infamous Lip Sense lipsticks. Let's get into it. According to Senegents' website, their founder, Joni Rogers Conte, developed Senegents in 1999. Joni claims to value Senegents' unique products and their high quality. Their website reads, In 1999, Joni partnered with an award-winning scientist to develop a patent never seen before liquid lip color, LipSense. Better than any lipstick or lip stain available, LipSense quickly skyrocketed in popularity for its long-lasting ability. With a simple three-coat application, LipSense delivers gorgeous color that stays on for up to 18 hours. And that was just the beginning of a long line of products that really work. Joni also wanted to offer one of the most lucrative compensation plans in the industry, designed for women who are serious about building their career from home. This business model of earning additional income by selling products that really work took off. Obviously, I'm sure most of you listening already know that MLMs are far from the most lucrative compensation plans, and they're actually some of the least lucrative out there. They very carefully have to toe the line between a shady MLM and a pyramid scheme, with many MLMs consistently crossing over it and paying their way out of trouble. So let's just cut the crap, Joni. This business model wasn't offered to benefit your sellers, just yourself and your little tippy top of your pyramid. Also, though she states that an award-winning scientist helped make these products, I want to make it very clear that Joni doesn't actually name this supposed scientist. I'm not saying that it makes these statements untrue, but it's absolutely a red flag. Still, Senegents apparently resonated with quite a few people and it took off. Joni apparently states in her book and in interviews that she's earned $1.7 million in revenue from product sales in her first year of business. Distributors also use this as a selling point, but they don't say who Joni was working with to develop a product line. Posts just refer to this mysterious person as the chemist, so that's not ominous at all. If you believe in and wholeheartedly support your products, why not take ownership of them? Why isn't this scientist named everywhere? In one interview, Joni is asked to talk about her beginnings and here's what she says. I don't think there's a product in the marketplace through direct sales that isn't a substantial product. It wouldn't last. The company would not last if they had products that were subpar, that didn't perform in the way your girlfriend told you. It would embarrass you. You'd say, I'm never buying from her again. The products have to be able to stand on their own. I just wanna interrupt her really briefly here to say that this may be the case if your friend were just a customer and nothing more. And I absolutely agree that companies typically can't stay afloat without good products. And frankly, I wholeheartedly believe that many MLMs out there may not be alive today if they operated under a traditional business model. And my thoughts behind that is because most MLMs have their distributors as their loyal customer fan base. And this girlfriend that Joni mentions just isn't someone who's helping a friend out and buying a lipstick. Chances are she may be a distributor or someone in this person's downline. But anyway, back to Joni. We patented long lasting color and introduced it into the market. We were really blessed in that. We had an amazing new technology in that we didn't have to reteach women how to put on makeup. We just showed them how to do it better. It lasted longer and they could go throughout their day without prepping. That's really how the company got started. I flew around to 18 different locations on donated mileage points. People bought me tickets to visit venture capitalists to try and get the money for funding. Of course, no one would give a broke single woman with no assets $3.4 million, which is what was outlined in my business plan to start the company. I took some samples and went to a trade show and began to sell those samples that my scientist who helped me formulate the product had made and began to sell that product. Then he'd made more, I paid for it and I'd sell it the next weekend. We sold product and I started signing up women who were at the trade show and who wanted to take some back and start selling it in her community to her girlfriends. That's how we began to generate income and build our sales force. That first year, I started in April of 1999, we sold $1.7 million worth of product. The next year, I think we did 3.8 and then 5.4 and it's just gotten better ever since. So don't mind me for going off script here for just a moment, but something that I find funny that just, (laughs) 
I don't know why, but when I had to read through this and then obviously record this, um, when she was like, oh yeah, my scientist would just make it and then I'd buy that and then I'd sell the product and he'd make more and I'd sell more. I couldn't help but being like, is that the same formula for like purchasing drugs? Like to have in a drug line? Like if this was like a meth lab or something, like, you know, your chemist makes the meth and then gets you the product and you sell the product. It just, it, it's probably just me and it's really late at night when I'm recording this right now, but I just, to me, I'm just like, huh, is this like a Walter White operation of lipsticks? But anyway, back to the script. Joni also insists that the term MLM is misunderstood and really they're a direct sales company. And look, Joni, you can call yourself whatever the hell you want and I honestly do not care. But as long as distributors have to depend upon signing up other distributors to earn money, it's not a business model that I can condone. Nevertheless, Senegens grew rapidly. Joni says that their company gets a bad rap because it's a tough company where you have to put in 100% and many distributors may not be up for that kind of challenge. She goes on to talk about how the company is expanding and how they're working with outside scientists to bring in nutrition products. And again, these magical scientists aren't mentioned as well, not a lab, not a name, not anything. So I guess I wouldn't be surprised if Senegens start selling supplements anytime soon because you know that's sure as hell what it sounds like. But before we get any deeper into this MLM's questionable activities though, I wanted to take a look at their lip scents and product lines. So does it really deserve the hype? One tube of lip sense is $25 for 0.025 fluid ounces. It's said that this product is kiss, smear, and waterproof and can last for anywhere for four to 18 hours. $25 isn't an asinine amount for that lipstick, so at least I can give them that. As for if it works, I started by checking out some reviews on YouTube so that I could get a visual for how well this product stayed on. Famous YouTubers like Sophia Nygaard explained that while the product was a bit more complicated than she expected to apply, it genuinely did stay on for the promised 18 hours. My only sadness here is that I love Sophia Nygaard and I am so sad that she featured an MLM on her channel. Other channels say that it burns their lips and one reviewer, Kirby, states that she feels like her lips could be 100% water and she'd still feel like people would be blaming her own lips for the product burning them. She also says that maybe if the product was advertised as a chemical peel, she wouldn't have so much of a problem with it. Another reviewer also explains that the first ingredient is alcohol. So if you have incredibly chapped lips, it's probably going to hurt. Frankly to me, it does look like more of a stain, but it looks a bit sticky and patchy. So I'm not sure if it'd be a product I'd personally enjoy, but it seems to do the job of not moving around. She also claims in the end that the pros far outweigh the cons considering that it truly does stay on all day. Generally speaking, this product was massive in 2017 with most of the reviews and sources I found coming from around that time frame. Lip Sense apparently also was like the official lipstick of Broadway with absolutely no proof or right to make that claim. Uh, some said it was just misled or poorly trained distributors saying this, but I'm not surprised if it's just, you know, coming from the top because it's not unusual. Other articles that came out about Lip Sense at that time weren't always glowing reviews though. The Organic Bunny writes, First of all, if a product stays on too long, this is usually not a good sign as it's likely composed of durable paint-like chemicals that I do not want on my skin, especially in area I could ingest it. Second, I dislike their selling points as most mean very little. Just because something is vegan or cruelty-free does not automatically make it safe. Oftentimes, it just means they use synthetics in place of items and probably left the animal testing up to their supplier instead. They also mentioned that their products are gluten-free, but did you know that the gluten molecule is too large to enter your pores? While yes, you should be mindful of gluten near your mouth and consuming it in cosmetics in general, the risk of absorption is scientifically not there. Besides fluffy selling points, the ingredients are anything but clean with women having bad reactions like chapped and peeling lips. Many lip sense reps try to defend the tingling and burning women experience, but I personally wonder why anyone would want to experience that when there are natural, clean, non-irritating lip glosses on the market. Now, as many of you know, the word natural does mean very little to me here. Cyanide is also natural and it's not good for you. So I don't really agree with their language used, but the article does go into an ingredient list breakdown. Propylene glycol is a massive ingredient in the LipSense products, as well as alcohol denat or denatured alcohol, which the organic bunny claims is super drying and linked to birth defects and cancer. Yet other sources say that this is ranked relatively low in terms of health risk and some denatured alcohols can be perfectly safe. There's a lot of debate about alcohols and skincare in general, which ones are safe and which ones are not. 
Even if lip scents may not be one of the best out there, I'm not going to exaggerate or lie about the ingredients and call them dangerous either. Plenty of MLMs do genuinely have worrying products out there and lip scents just seems like it's just not the best on the market, but it may not be terrible. As for consumers that tried Senegence, there were quite a few complaints. One on the BBB reads, I purchased Senegence products from a friend. Her Facebook videos created intrigue and I decided to purchase the products. I started with lipstick and liked the product. I then decided to make a large purchase. My friend who is a distributor for Senegence told me I would receive a large discount if I ordered the products as a distributor. She also told me any products I purchased had a 100% money back guarantee, even if open. I decided to follow her advice and use the distributor method. I received my products and began using immediately. Shortly after using, I noticed acne and bumps on my face. I made an appointment with an esthetician at a clinic I have been seen at before and showed her the symptoms on my face. She recommended me to stop using the products. My acne and facial bumps went away after stopping. This was also confirmed by my doctor that my face appeared clear after I stopped using the products. I want to return the products to Senegence and was told that since I signed up as a distributor, I was not entitled to a return. Information that was never presented to me by the Senegence employee who signed me up and walked me through my Senegence purchase. I then contacted Senegence and asked what could be done. They told me if I got a doctor's note that confirmed my body reacted negatively to the products from Senegence, they would accept a return. I did this. My doctor wrote a note that to the best of their knowledge, Senegence was causing facial reactions, flare-ups, and acne. Senegence then told me, since my doctor could not say with 100% certainty that my acne and facial reaction was from the product, they would not refund the money. I don't understand how a doctor would give 100% certainty that the product caused a reaction unless they were there with the patient for observation. This company took advantage of me with false information by their employee and should be held responsible for what their employee claimed about the company's return policy. And I know that's a pretty long review, but I found it worth talking about in full, especially because Senegence actually replied to this one and said that since there wasn't enough evidence to prove Senegence caused this, they wouldn't qualify it as an adverse reaction. I genuinely don't know what's more, like what more proof did they need? Because it's insulting that the only attempt they made to remedy this was by saying they could offer her an exchange, which is an absolute joke. Other reviews have said the same, that they don't stand by the 100% satisfaction guarantee promised to them. Site Jabber, where they have a 2.6 out of five stars, explains that the company's stock issues are due to the company essentially going viral and exploding all of a sudden. But again, that's hardly an excuse for why the products are said to burn so many people's faces. One three-star review says, if you can deal with 10 minutes of searing pain, it's great. I'm not sure what to make of that one, honestly. Like I'd rather have just a moisturizer, not something that's going to set my face on fire. Thank you very much. On yet another April 10, 2020 thing is called Burns My Skin. Another review from July, 2020 says their lipstick burns lips and eyelids. Kathleen in December, 2020 said that the lip scents peeled right off while another the year before said they left her lips blistered. I won't pretend there's no positive reviews here because there absolutely are, but I think we're well past the point of saying that the people whose lips get burned are outliers. It happens enough that it's a bit concerning. And frankly, I'd like to know some of the actual science behind the product and who this mysterious chemist is and why they don't explain lip sense's safety guidelines. You'd think with all the burning complaints that the company would step forward to take some of the heat off themselves, but I haven't really seen that happen. Now, before we continue on to discuss where does their money go, including probably unsurprising here, some of their money goes to Trump. um, Let's go ahead and take a break to speak about today's sponsors. And let's start out today's sponsor segment by talking about HelloFresh. You guys know them, I love them, hopefully you love them too. But in case you don't know who HelloFresh is, HelloFresh is America's number one meal delivery kit. They make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. And you get to do a whole bunch of things with HelloFresh. They've got like over 50 menu options you can choose from every single week, from extra gourmet meals to even more like vegetarian and pescatarian options. And this summer, HelloFresh also has everything you need to get grilling. That includes grilling bundles, burger packs, surf and turf packs, and more with less shopping at the grocery store and more time with your friends and family. And HelloFresh offers the flexibility you need to easily customize your order every single week within the app. It's super easy. I just go into the app, choose which week I want meals, choose which weeks I don't want meals, and then I pick what I want and then that's it. It does all the hard work for me. So if you wanna get started, make sure to go to hellofresh.com MLM14 and use code MLM14 for up to 14 free meals plus 
plus free shipping. Again, make sure to go to hellofresh.com slash MLM14 and use code MLM14 for up to 14 free meals plus free shipping. This episode is also sponsored by Magic Spoon. Growing up, cereal was one of the best parts of being a kid, but when I started to get older, I kind of gave it up because I realized that there was just a lot of sugar and junk in there that I just really shouldn't eat. And looking at some of those cereals now, I'm like, yikes. And that's what's so cool about Magic Spoon because Magic Spoon cereal tastes like that sugary cereal I used to eat when I was a kid, but without all the bad crap in it. It literally has like zero grams of sugar, 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving and only 140 calories. They have amazing flavors. One of my favorite being the fruity ones. I love them so, so much, but they also have like cocoa, frosted and peanut butter. And there's like cinnamon and blueberry as well. Those are limited edition, I think though. Click the link below to get some Magic Spoon cereal today. You can build your very own variety box. Just use my code Mondays for $5 off. You can choose from the best-selling cocoa, fruity, frosted, and peanut butter, plus some other awesome flavors, including blueberry and cinnamon. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product that it's backed by a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason whatsoever, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. So click the link below and use code Mondays for $5 off, or go to magicspoon.com Mondays to save $5 on your order today. Oh, and for my Canadian fans, Magic Spoon delivers to you too. Just an FYI, you're not getting left out of this one. Now, before I start talking about if you can make money and get into what we're used to seeing with MLMs, Cinegens has quite a unique aspect of it. And that's because one of their major ties is to Trump. According to one source, Records show that Ben Conte, the chief strategy officer of Cinegence International, the company that distributes LipSense, was Oklahoma's top donor to the 2017 inauguration committee, having given $250,000 under the name Benny Conte. Conte is also married to Cinegence's founder and CEO, Joni Rogers Conte. What's more, according to Open Secrets, the leading independent nonpartisan nonprofit research group tracking all political contributions in the US from 1989 to 2017, it appears that Conte is a first time donor. His wife, Rogers Conte, gave a total of 2000 over 2006 and 2007 to the National Republican Congressional Committee. So what would inspire one to donate a large sum for the first time to an inauguration committee versus a campaign? Conte and Rogers Conte ignored multiple requests for interviews and a marketing representative for Cenegence only offered this. We wouldn't comment on Ben's personal views from Cenegence as they are not affiliated with the company. Generally speaking, according to the president of Los Angeles Ethics Commission anyway, you don't give a quarter of a million dollars away without expecting something in return. Do I know for sure if this was done to curry favor? Absolutely not. But do I feel like something sus may have been going on? Also, yeah. I feel like it would truly almost be naive and stupid to believe that this donation was simply given without any kind of reason or expectation in return. What makes me even just a little bit more suspicious of this is the fact that it happened in 2017 in Oklahoma. Apparently, former Oklahoma State Senator Ted Fisher was appointed at Senegence's economic development officer at the Oklahoma office around this time as well. One of the reasons for this could be that Senegence intends to expand from California to a 225 acre campus in Oklahoma they're already making massive steps to do so. According to one 2017 article, the company already has broken ground on a 150,000 square foot distribution center with a 250,000 square foot warehouse, both of which are slated for completion in mid 2018. The next construction phase will include developing corporate offices with manufacturing, research and development and convention facilities on site. Build out is estimated to take five to seven years to complete. So naturally, Cenogens would want to get in good graces with the state they're building on, and it's unsurprising that they might have to pay to play here, or at least pay to have a blind eye turned their way should any issues arise. As Refinery29 clarifies, this is not illegal, but whether or not you think it's honorable or questionable is up to you. Not to mention, Joni's husband isn't just donating a quarter of a million dollars to Trump, but Joni herself is basically buying up her own hometown. According to the Sepulpa News in March, 2017, the expansion of the multi-million dollar cosmetic company Cenogence to its founder's hometown is having an impact all over the area, including two of the most historic buildings in downtown Sepulpa. Ben and Joni Rogers Conte are owners of Cenogence. Besides its mammoth expansion into the Sepulpa, the company has holdings in California, Canada, and Australia. They have acquired the old Theo, Berry Hill Building at 115 East Dewey Avenue and the Cress 5 and 10 store and 121 East Dewey. 
The two 100-year-old buildings adjoin each other. The buildings will be restored, remodeled, and become facilities useful for the company's visiting executives who will be spending many weeks each month helping to oversee various parts of our expansion into Oklahoma, Joni said. We are very excited to have the opportunity to restore these buildings to their original beauty. One building will become eight individual small apartments with a storefront and the bottom floor to contain a soda fountain-like setup and a small convenience store for the travelers. Additionally, plans are in play to turn a building on new Sepulpa Road into a small temporary manufacturing facility, hopefully fully operational within three to four months. Again, we are excited to update the area with a beautiful facility that would house 75 plus individuals, she said. Now, I'm sure there's a few of you that were kind of like me that had no idea where Sepulpa, Oklahoma is, and I'd never heard of it until I started researching for this episode either. I understand the topic of gentrification or even just massive companies moving into towns can be controversial and messy, but I think you can absolutely believe an MLM Titan is probably the last type of business I'd want buying up a town that I live in. Frustratingly, that's exactly what it seems like Joni is doing. Not to mention, Tulsa World claims that Salpulpa's $1.5 million infrastructure grant, which was a federal grant to make water infrastructure improvements and support businesses, is now in part being used to help Senegents. According to grantee estimates, the infrastructure project is expected to create 1,515 jobs and attract $813 million in private investment. Senegents International, a direct sales cosmetics and skincare firm that operates in more than a dozen countries, has announced it is constructing a corporate campus at 18337 West Oklahoma 33. Senegents doesn't really need this money, quite frankly. They're already a multi-million dollar company, and it seems like they simply moved into this town and just kind of taken over, including the grants for water repairs. Now, I'm not going to say that everything they've done is terrible. After all, there are articles about a mural that Joni has given as a gift to the city about how their charity, the Make Sense Foundation, has offered scholarships to Sepulpa graduates. Now, I did obviously do some digging about this nonprofit, and frankly, there just isn't much to it. I feel like this is kind of exactly what we've seen Unique do. It's another cosmetic company opening a small nonprofit to attach to their name so they appear charitable, but in actuality, their influence is quite minimal. For clarification, I'm not saying they have not impacted any lives. It's great that they offer scholarship opportunities to young women, simply that I get the impression this foundation was made to make them look good more than actually do good. Now let's take a look at some of the shady behavior and obviously lawsuits and all that fun stuff with Senegents. So one lawsuit against Senegents took place back around 2002, only three years after the company was actually founded. It looks like this ended in 2004 and was filed by a woman named Carrie McDowell. I found the documents on Court Listener and by the time all of this was said and done, Carrie was awarded about $30,000. The actual reasons why are not very clear though. It simply states copyright infringement under the cause. So, I mean, that's not a great thing though. This isn't the only lawsuit that Joni has faced though. In fact, as of 2018, she revealed via Facebook, real professional here, Joni, uh, to her distributors that a former unnamed distributor was suing her and it read in part, Hello to all my lovelies. It is with sadness that I write this message to you. We have been notified that a domestic dispute and breakup involving one of our distributors, couples, has unfortunately resulted in a legal action being filed in court. Both Senegents and I have been brought into the case based upon what we will show are erroneous allegations. While my lawyer tells me I cannot discuss the facts of the case, it is now in the public record that one member of this distributor couple alleges that Senegents has taken sides in their dispute and claims that one of them has been treated unfairly in the process. There is no truth to these allegations. I am confident that a trier of the fact will see that Senegents has actually taken no adverse action against either person in this distributorship. Instead, we have worked to ensure that each person's rights to their distributorship remain intact as they have been since this couple applied to become joint owners of the distributorship and Senegents accepted that application. We hope and pray that this couple can find a quick resolution to their heartbreaking dispute. While we understand that when love and financial issues are combined, reasonable people may take unreasonable actions, it should be known that we will utilize every legal tool available to us to defend these baseless accusations. Thank you for your support and understanding as this difficult matter may play out in the public eye. I guess I shouldn't be surprised though that this all happened on Facebook because you see in that interview I mentioned earlier, Joni talked about how she doesn't tolerate mean girls or bullies, but that her company is all about positivity and their amazing products. Sure. I found it interesting that she used that wording after all because I feel like most CEOs don't have to clarify that they don't tolerate bullies and mean girls in their company. That should just go without saying. 
But as one blog post by a former Senegent seller claims, most of the management in downlines is done on Facebook in large groups. This article writes, these groups are great for the Kool-Aid drinkers, but not for the distributor who has legitimate questions or criticisms of anything, finds that some products aren't working as advertised or heaven forbid, doesn't like one of the products. That sort of disloyalty isn't allowed. The very large Seni Sisterhood, don't know how to say that, Sen Sisterhood, groups quickly turn into mean girl clubs with bullying and people reporting each other to the Senegent's compliance or legal sections. Any distributor can be compliance police and snitch on you. In fact, emails from compliance are about the only quick response from Senegent's you'll ever get. The company is infamous for not bothering to reply to most other emails or phone calls. And yes, they do call themselves the Senna Sisterhood or the Sen Sisterhood, which is just cringy as fuck, but okay. Though that only gets worse when you consider that the titles of working your way up this little pyramid shenanigan are maiden, lady, duchess, princess, crown princess, and queen. And look, I get corporate titles are boring. And for the most part, when I talk about MLMs, it's not the superficial outside cringeworthy stuff, but it's the truly worrying behaviors that lie underneath that are the problem. But I couldn't not take notice of this. Like seriously, who wants to be called a maiden when you first join a company? Like, no, thank you. And apparently this supposed Senna sisterhood will rat you out to the princesses and queens if you're selling products on eBay, if you discount more than 50%, like things of that nature. Former distributors have similar things to say and state that even after spending thousands of dollars to sell during demos and in parties, their upline would continually pressure them to join the higher ranks like the Jewels Royal Princesses, where it was not only described as cultish, but you had to pay monthly dues to be a part of it. You should never ever have to pay to be an employee somewhere. Worse yet, you shouldn't have to lose thousands of dollars either. One former seller wrote, it was a buildup. By year four, I had $5,000 on my credit card that I only used for Senegents. I didn't inventory. I had over $4,000 worth of products that were sitting there. I hadn't made any decent sales other than a $50 sale here and there. But I was constantly being pressured to place orders, post more videos, host more parties, etc. I was working a full-time job. Every weekend I was doing a stall at craft shows, which cost money. And I rarely made enough money to even cover the booth rental or doing private parties that no one came to, or they would come to get free samples and the door pizzas, but not buy anything. I was also out of pocket for the refreshments for the parties, not to mention the time to do them. I began to resent the company and their way of doing things. My upline and crown princess were constantly telling us that if we weren't selling it, it was our own fault because the products sell themselves if we just tried harder. But frankly, I got tired of looking like a trashy person with my arms painted up with products accosting women I didn't know in bathrooms and malls or airports. I got disillusioned. I started having sales with greater than 15% discounts, which is the most allowed by the company and got reported to the Senegent's compliance department. After the third letter from compliance, I told Kelly in compliance I was done and told her to terminate me. I quit that day. I can't know for sure if in the 2018 lawsuit, Joni is facing deals with this, but I wouldn't be all that surprised if it's related. How can Joni or any of these other distributors claim that the Senna sisters are their own boss? Like don't bosses get to set their own prices? It's just a shame that not Senegents isn't shady because of their own business model, but because of how they treat the people within the company itself and they really do not treat them well. So this of course is going to lead us into our last question. Can you make money with Senegents? And frankly, I wouldn't wanna support a company that treats anyone the way Senegents treats people, but let's just finish this off with some numbers like we usually do to hammer the point home. For years, Senegents has been making claims about how you can make so much money selling their LipSense products. Many of these claims on the website itself. It's bad enough when it's just distributors saying this on Facebook, but practically every crown princess out there is saying how they've paid off $20,000 of student loan debt or how their whole life has changed and all that crap. However, when you go to take a look at the numbers, it's simply not going to be the case for a vast majority, and we're talking like 99% of sellers that sign up for Senegents. The finance guy breaks down compensation plans and explains how their endless looping cycle of never earning enough each month continues. There's five massive red flags listed in this article from the finance guy as well, which read flag number one is constant recruitment of new numbers. Flag number two is promotion through recruitment. Flag number three is pay to play. Flag number four is most of the rewards go to your upline. And flag number five is more than five levels in a payout plan. So can you make money with Senegents? It really doesn't seem that way. There's many, many red flags that say this is not it. Is LipSense a long lasting liquid lip totally worth burning your lips for and supporting this company? 
I don't know, I'd say no to that too, but that's obviously gonna be up for you to decide. But with all of that being said, that's where I'm going to end today's episode of Multi-Level Mondays. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure that you're liking, following and subscribing so that you can stay up to date on all the latest episodes. And if you wanna connect with me outside of these episodes, make sure you go to the description box, click on my link tree link that'll have all my social media, Twitch, Twitter, all that good stuff. So thank you all so much for making it to another episode. I hope you have a great rest of your Monday and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.